begins in three, two, one. Movement tech in video games dates a while back, going so far back as the early Quake days, learning half-beat and double-beat strafe jumps to give yourself an edge by speeding up your movement. After all, the faster you are, the harder you are to hit. New Vegas has ways to move faster than the standard walking, but unlike many other first-person shooters, this movement tech does not really give you a combat advantage. However, in speedrunning, we don't need combat advantage, just speed. Let's go back and recap some other forms of movement, like what's in Quake Champions. In Quake Champions, you perform strafe jumps as mentioned here. This movement is great for gaining speed on a straightaway line, but considering lack of air control in the game's engine, save for with a few other characters in the game, there's not a lot you can do to preserve that momentum in corners save for some really precise tech like circle jumping. You will see in the clip here that your standard walking pace tops out at 310 UPS, or units per second. However, with some strafe jumping thrown in, you can easily double your pace to upwards of 650 UPS. If you're watching the key capture in the bottom right, you'll notice that I'm holding space instead of tapping it, because auto-hopping is turned on to make sure I always hit jump on the very first tick I hit the ground, a basic premise of bunny hopping and strafe jumping. There are plenty of other games that have movement tech in them, such as Valve CSGO. In CSGO, you hear the term bunny hopping thrown around a lot more, but that's namely because you're moving around with considerably more air control, like a bunny. There are other people who explain the why of both bunny hopping and strafe jumping way better than I do here, so if you're interested in learning more, I highly recommend you watch some of the other videos on YouTube showcasing these movement techniques. Bee hopping is something else you want to be keenly aware of so that you may understand the concept of air control, for even though New Vegas doesn't have the same pristine air control you can get in CSGO, it does have air control, and controlling your direction with air strafing is a great skill to learn. Luckily, CSGO is free, so you can download that game from Steam and jump into a B-Hop server and learn how to bunny hop in there. Now, to get into the meat of the video, stop hopping. Understanding the two movement techs from before should give you a little bit of insight as to learning stop hops, but the strange thing about New Vegas stop hopping is how it's executed. Stop hops are part bunny hop, part circle jump, and part exploiting the stagger in the game from landing after a jump. If you're watching the video right now, it's a little easier to explain. You should see that as I'm going through the air, I'm holding forward, or W, the forward movement key, right up until the moment I hit the ground. Once I hit the ground, I release W, shake my camera much like what you would do with a B-hop or a circle jump, hit space again, and hold W to get moving again. Because of the way the new Vegas Gamebryo engine works, when you hit the ground, you slide a little bit. Stop hopping sort of abuses this fact and starts another jump while trying to add forward movement to it. If you do it correctly, you'll notice you'll go considerably faster in the air, similar to strafe jumping and bunny hopping. Proper stop hopping will net you an approximate 30% speed bonus compared to just running. While it's not as fast as reload dashing or its counterpart, which we'll cover later on in the series, it is useful for covering small distances and moving around the game before you get the 357 revolver in the run. Shout out to Goomba, whom I've linked in the video description and who you can reach out to in the New Vegas running discord for explaining further the nitty gritty of stop hops. Goomba, the founder of stop hopping, did a lot of research and found that you can get more consistent stop hops when your weapons are holstered. This is due to the animation cycles and stagger length increase when you're holstered versus when your guns are out. Though this seems like a very niche and silly tech to learn, if done properly, this tech can save you invaluable seconds in your any percent run. I suggest you practice this tech before you start attempting the run and try to weave it in where you think you can best fit it in. Stop hopping is difficult to time at first, but with diligent practice, it can be your greatest tool in running this game. 